The bolts and big washers have arrived, so it's finally time to secure the sill plate to the foundation walls. This step is crucial. Once anchored, the entire floor structure will be locked in place. It's a repetitive but necessary process. I have about 30 anchors to install, ensuring the sill plate is firmly attached. The routine is simple but time consuming. Drill a hole into the concrete, clear out the dust, hammer the bolt into place, and then tighten it down with my impact driver. Looking back, this moment feels like a big step forward. Not long ago, these foundation walls were just an empty formwork waiting for concrete. Now, they're becoming the solid base for my entire house. If you're enjoying this build and want to see more progress, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out and keeps me motivated to share every step of this journey. And if you want to make sure you don't miss the next episode, hit that notification bell. I'm Greg and I'm building my house all by myself. From digging the footings and pouring the foundation to framing the floor, every step of this journey has been a challenge, but also an incredible experience. If you've been following along, you know that I've faced twisted lumber, uneven surfaces and plenty of hard work. Now, it's time to anchor the sill plate and start sheeting the subfloor. As you remember from previous episodes, the lumber I'm working with has been a real challenge. Twisted, bowed, and far from perfect. Now that I'm anchoring the sill plate, I need to plane it down in some spots to ensure the floor will be as level as possible. With the sill plate now permanently anchored to the foundation, it's time to secure the floor joists. I'm nailing them directly into the sill plate, making sure everything is tight and properly aligned. Definitely, walking over the floor joists like I am doing here can be risky, so please don't try this at home. It's important to always prioritize safety when working on construction projects. Make sure your floor joists are properly secured before walking on them, and if you're not sure, use proper scaffolding or temporary supports. Safety first. Nailing the floor joists will prevent any uplift issues, especially in a crawl space floor system like mine. Once the joists are nailed in place, the structure will become much more rigid and ready for the next stage.
bit of bad luck here, one of the adhesive foam tips broke and stayed stuck in the gun. It's always frustrating when things like this happen. Just goes to show that construction often involves more than just the building. It's problem solving too.
I started the subfloor sheeting a day before All Saints Day, which was Thursday. I had one day off on Monday as well. At that point, the weather forecast became my best friend because winter and freezing temperatures were fast approaching. To be honest, I was jumping from one task to another, depending on the weather conditions. I even worked a bit on November 1st, but it was mostly about cleaning and preparing the foundation for waterproofing, as the cold weather made it impossible to do more. Some of the work I've already completed will be shown in future episodes, where I'll gather everything into meaningful content. This way, you can see how all the pieces come together in the bigger picture. Stay tuned for more. After one day of working on the subfloor, you can already see the progress. I was in a rush because I had ground works scheduled for Monday and had rented an excavator. My goal was to get the floor done before that, so I worked late into the night using big LED lamps to light my way. It was freezing and windy, but I kept pushing forward. Unfortunately, despite all the effort, I couldn't finish everything as planned. The floor didn't turn out exactly as I had hoped. I made a few mistakes and there were some gaps that were bigger than I expected. However, at that point, the most important thing was to finish it as quickly as possible. <laughs> 